So thank you, first of all, for attending the second Parental Information Evening of the Year. Um, I'm Amy Henderson, for those people that um, haven't met me yet. Um, I'm the assistant head teacher in charge of Year 7 specifically, uh, amongst other responsibilities. So I, I guess tonight is about sharing some key, what, what we think as a school, some really key pieces of information that we think parents um, will benefit from knowing really. Um, including some key dates for the remainder of the year, which we did cover a little bit of last time. Um, just a bit of an introduction uh, to scholar habits, scho our scholar learning habits. Um, hopefully the students, uh, your children have been talking about that. Um, but if not, we can hopefully fill you in on what that is and what that means at Charlton High School. Um, some key code of conduct stuff that we talk to students about all the time, just so parents are you know, in the know, I guess, um, when it comes to kind of the key school drives when it comes to the code of conduct. Um, really importantly, progress test information. Um, I know you'll have seen um, quite a lot of communication around this already. You've probably already started looking at this with your with your children. Um, but we just wanted to take this opportunity to share with you that kind of key information. And, and that will include looking at um, the effort criteria we use in school, which I know in in the autumn term I talked about being a really kind of important part of, of you know part of your child's journey effort is a really key indicator of future success um, and finally there's a video at the end which we is available to you we will send this out via um, via a message uh, email communication and you will be able to watch it in your own time but I am going to play it just because I know there are many parents that have older, older um, children in the school, but there are many that don't. So actually, how are we going to report this kind of progress test information home, um, home to you? So hopefully that will be helpful um, for you to watch. It's about 30 minutes long and I've left it till the end of the presentation. For those people that think, actually, I will watch this in my own time. That's absolutely fine. You, you can leave the meeting. Um, but for those that want to watch it now and kind of get it over and done with, that's fine also. So I'm going to get started. There's a couple more people that just need to be let in. So I'm going to get started in 30 seconds. Perfect. Okay, so first and foremost, key dates for Year 7. Um, so Progress Test Fortnight will start on Monday. So Monday the 15th of January and it'll run until Friday the 26th of January. Um, more information on that through the presentation so I won't spend too much time there. Um, for Year 7 specifically, Parents Evening is a bit later in the year, um, you know, because we feel like that's important and that's teachers really getting to know your children and, and hopefully you've spoken to some already. Um, but that will be on the 9th of May. It's always on a Thursday night parents' evening at Charlton High School. Um, and it will start at 4pm and finish at 6.30pm. And it will be in person, so it will not be a virtual meeting. It will be an in-person meeting. Um, key things around that is you'll get communication well in advance of the meeting. And um, that tells you to look at the booking system. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to book, basically, that. Um, and it's really important that you log on that first because what tends to happen is people log on quickly and they get the first choices um, when it comes to timing. So just making sure that you, you, you're able to access that initially is, is going to be really important. So when, when you do get that initial communication, it's well in advance of it opening, so don't worry about that. That's the time to do it. It's just a little bit of a nudge to say there's, that that's a really good time for you to um, check you can get onto that booking system to book your in-person appointments. So they're the, they're the main two dates that I think parents need to be aware of um, in advance of, um, in, in advance of, you know, the next term. So, over the last, you know, over the last year actually, but, but certainly this term, we've been driving a number of learning habits with students. Um, and this is really to support them with maximising their success in learning. You know, we, we did think this presentation was a really great opportunity to share with parents the messages that we're giving to your children. Um, so far, we've focused on, I think, with Year 7, uh, five scholar habits. Um, 
soon we'll be introducing the, the other two in a bit more depth but we've been really focused on um five so far apologies something's just happened to my screen which is making it very difficult to see one second um i want to say that apologies unfortunately i've got a new laptop and it for some reason decided to uh, make my life difficult so that's not great okay so our first scholar habit this is problematic the screen one second Um, our first scholar habit is around um, organisation and we thought it'd be good to share with parents what that would look like for them um, and in terms of organisation we really feel like as a parent you can support this by actively looking in your child's exercise book. We do encourage them to take them home um, because we feel like that's, that's beneficial. Um, so that's something we will we encourage quite strongly. Um, apologies, I'm still struggling to get the people in that have come. So yeah, we'll, we encourage students to take them home. We we also feel as though it's really important to ensure that your child's got stationery um, that they need in order to ensure that everything's presented how it needs to be: pen, pencil, ruler glue glue stick highlighter um we encourage your child to revisit their learning and their exercise up routinely you know extending their notes um so just there's just so many things that from a parental perspective it's really helpful if you support um i am going to be two seconds because at the moment my screen isn't letting anybody in um if you just give me a minute and i'll get that sorted now Okay, I'm back. That, sorry about that. That was getting problematic. Um, sorry for the people that took me here just to let in. Something went wrong with my laptop, so I couldn't actually see who who was coming in. Um, so, yeah. So, just making sure they've got all their resources, making sure that you're encouraging them to revisit their learning. One of the big things, you know, we say for home study is going over either the day's lessons you've just had going over you going through your books they've got some boxes at the bottom that says key information and next steps summarizing some of that learning it's really powerful or alternatively and um, i know i prefer it this way as a teacher and um, before the before your next lessons of the night before your next lesson going through those subjects that you've got the next day just reminding yourself really what it is that you've covered in in the previous lesson because we always review learning so that's part of our learning model is reviewing learning um before we move on to kind of further learning so it's just a really powerful way to ensure that your child's prepared for that lesson and feels really confident with what they're about to go study and um, the next uh, learning habit is attention so paying attention we say paying attention like a star and that's really a way to, to kind of uh, allow students to remember um, the kind of expectations with that. So things like sitting up straight um, making sure that you are, you know, tracking your teacher, that you are asking, asking and answering questions and you are respecting each other in the classroom, each other, the teacher. You know, it's really important from a parental perspective, though, you know, it's helpful where learning is most effective students need to pay attention you'll know that but just ensure your child comes to school ready to learn and um, they've had a good night's sleep um, and, and asking them questions about what they've been studying you know what they've what they've done in lessons each day and encouraging them to do this as much as possible it, you know sharing what you learn you'll, you'll know yourself as as, as as people that have gone through education and also people that work um, that we learn best or we certainly kind of memorise best when we've, we've talked about it, when we've verbalised the things that we have learned that day. So that's just a really powerful way of supporting that habit at home. Um, the third one is reading with fluency. 
So we have, um, again, we call that read, reading routinely, you know, engaging with reading strategies, actively improving your vocabulary, like really taking time to learn that, and then delving deeper into reading materials, into a different range of reading materials. And, and by that, we mean everything, you know. There's no, no reading's bad reading. Um, obviously, we, there are some reading that's better than others, but there's no bad reading. Um, but we also encourage audiobooks because it's really good for students to listen to vocabulary and develop it that way. But from a parental perspective, you know, taking your child to the local library, you know, encouraging them to take books out. We have an incredible school library as well, so you know, sending them to visit our library, we, we you know, we make it make it um, a priority really that they get comfortable in the in the in the library space because we want them to be visiting that as much as possible. Um, checking on the reading time your child's completed um, and make sure it's part of their kind of daily routine. I know I've talked about this before, but if you know if, if you have a certain part of the day where reading is just what you do, it's just more likely to be something that you, you kind of keep up with, much like any routine that we have um, as, as people. Asking your child's question about questions about what they're reading, you know, what's happened so far, who's your favourite character, why 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 are they why is that particular person your favourite character? What do you think might happen next? Just questions like that can really encourage them um, and, and, and and keep them, you know, excited about reading. En encouraging them to share new words um, that they might learn at school with you at home, that's something that you could do which is really powerful. You know, we know from research that a new word that we learn unless we've used it in everyday vocabulary three times it's not something that we will we will you know call upon um moving forward so actually using those words is is, is the most important thing not just learning them okay so we also focus on collaborate and communicate and um, and and this is all around talk it's all around listening explaining talk you know understanding where we are in terms of our aura set presenting um and your children will speak to you all the time but giving them the, them the opportunity to talk through issues and things that interest them and again reading just is a really good part of creating empathy also and the final one i'm going to go through um this evening is the home study habits now we have worked really really closely with this one especially over the last kind of you know just before christmas and um just and, and this and this week so far um, and last week but making sure that you know when your child got somewhere to sit down um, and, and discuss their homework plan it with them it's important for your child to maintain their social calendar with after school activities we really strongly feel like that so it's got to be part of the routine it's, it can't be something that takes over their life it's got to be part of kind of part of the life not their whole after school life shouldn't be taken doing home study and that's something that we're really kind of um we really drive in school we do want students to revise we do want students to complete all their homework but but the kind of we come from it from a side of making sure that they've got time to do other things as well um you know making sure that homework is being completed and they're revisiting learning as, as i discussed earlier where they, they've got somewhere to do it we've already talked a little bit about that and encouraging them to just go over that that those lessons for the next day or the day that they've just had um, literacy legend is another um, scholar habit. It seems like this is overwhelming information as I'm saying it out loud now. And I want to reassure you that this is all kind of part and parcel of every day. Um, it's not something that, you know, that they have to be able to tell us off, off you know, off cuff. We introduce this slowly, but it's part of how we plan, it's part of how we teach. So I don't want you to think, oh gosh, this is a lot for for, for my child to even get the head around just the kind of scholar habits but what we know about these habits that we kind of we work with is these are the most powerful habits our students can have for future success and so we do focus on it but it's focused on in a really measured way where students have time to really kind of digest this information so if we i apologize in advance that i'm giving all this information to you all at once but literacy legend how to plan your writing planning is a really really important stage of writing 
and it's the stage of writing students are really reluctant to do um and for whatever reason that might be you know a lot of students just want to get started they want to just you know it, it, it's just they, they don't want to kind of think about the bigger picture but as you'll be aware you know when, when we're doing things if we're not kind of really considering the bigger picture what we do isn't as a great quality it's not the best quality it could be so we do actively promote the planning process of writing um and again as from a parental perspective active promoting reading i've mentioned reading loads of times but we you know reading is a, is is really really crucial to your child's access to education um ask to read through their exercise books and ask them to talk you through the process of a piece of writing that they've done and that might be that well actually we think we could do that a bit better and that's fine you know it's it's about that journey it's about making sure that we um we we can um I'm just letting someone in. You know, we can really think about what it is we've done and what we can do better. Um, talking to them about the new words that they're learning, you know, I've already mentioned that. So a lot of these, as you'll have noticed as I'm going through them, overlap, they really do. And, and, and that's because our habits and our, the, you, you know, the way we become the best scholars also overlap. Okay, so that's the scholars, the scholar habits. I've not gone through what that. There's one missing there that I've not gone through with you, but in, in general, they're the things that we've been driving with students over the last term, and we will continue to drive. Home studies being the main one we've looked at in the last kind of um, couple of weeks, and, and, and a couple of weeks before Christmas as well. Um, our code of conduct is a really simple and easy um, thing to remember. And it's based on mutual respect and kindness. Um, with such a large community in school, it's really, really important that parents and, pa parents and carers mirror our messages at home and expect the highest standards of organisation, organization, being prepared, safety and respect. So our code of conduct really is, uh, you know, we only have three rules in school um, and they are be ready, be respectful and be safe. Um, now, Obviously, within that, there's a lot of things to think about, but, but, but we always use that language about, you know, is this, are we ready for this? Is that respectful? You know, would that be considered safe? Because actually, they, they encompass everything you could possibly want um, you, our children to kind of really get on board with. Um, but we do have, like, a main focus for each of these different areas. So... Being ready, that's about uniform, it's about making sure that they're presented in a way that, you know, that, that shows they're ready to learn, but also, you know, they're part of our community. Uh, being respectful is making sure that you are keeping your hands to yourself. You, you know, as you will know, the children like to um, what's it, play in, in a way sometimes where, you know, we discourage it because actually give me hands till some people don't like that and, and, and sometimes students can't kind of measure where other people or other children feel in, in that scale. So we just take the approach that, you know, we keep our hands to ourselves. We, we, we don't rough play with people because that, you know, can ultimately cause problems. Um, and being safe, making sure you keep to the left. We've got very, very narrow corridors at Charlton High School. Um, and it's just the way it was built. So in terms of, you know, in terms of walking around, we have a number of students in the school. We, we do ask them to walk to the left um, to make sure, you know, they've got their space and that, you know, they're, they're keeping space for other people that might be coming onto the corridor that they're leaving to go to their next lesson. So they're kind of the big three things that we ask our students to do. In terms of um, the uniform and equipment, you know, we do ask for perfect uniform. We ask them not to have outdoor clothing inside. Um, that they've got a school bag and the pencil case with all of the great stuff that you can have in that pencil case too. Um, in terms of parental support, you know, making sure that you're helping your child prepare that uniform the night before, um, ensuring that they look smart before they leave the house. And make sure that they've got a bag with all the necessary, um, necessary equipment in. Um, and if they haven't got one and you need any assistance with that at all, 
just just contact our head, the head of you. Contact Miss Osborne. She's wonderful and she will definitely be able to help. Um, students who wear their uniform with pride feel like part of the school community, and and, and they're in. You know, the uniform really does enable them to get into that character um, that they need in order to flourish, both emotionally and obviously academically. Personal space. I've talked about this a little bit. Hands to yourself. Um, it's just it's it's it, the mature way to conduct yourself in all walks of life, and I think having that conversation with with your children is is really powerful. You know, if we don't bump and barge into each other, uh, there can be no kind of misunderstandings of trouble. Um, uh, misunderstanding and trouble just doesn't escalate from silliness, and, and it genuinely, um, as someone that's worked at the school now for I think about fourteen years, a very long time, you know, any silliness that does you. Know, Start. It, it's always escalated from something very, very um, minor, a misunderstanding of, of kind. So it's really important that we do continue to have those conversations with students. If all our students walk on the left, I've, I've talked a little bit about that, so I don't really need to go on about that. But it just it makes it safer for them as they're walking around school. Um, I'm not going to go through this one just because I think I've kind of covered it. But that's kind of the the. The, the code of conduct message about being ready, being respectful, and being safe. Um, set up the day is similar to the organisation one, just make sure they've got an evening routine where everything's prepared. Obviously, being on time, you know, it, it's it's attendance and punctuality are really, really crucial. We know, looking at all the results for all the many years we've been doing this, that the more students at school, the more successful that they are. Um, now, obviously, there are some some things that kind of get in the way of that, and we, we are understanding of those things. So, if you've got any concerns, again, please, please, please um, contact Miss Osborne. She's brilliant, um, and she'll definitely be able to support in some way. Um, we have a really, really, I didn't mention this at the start, but I just wanted to share it with parents, because I think just knowing kind of what's been covered, is, is a good a conversation start uh, with, with your children, but a really strong careers offer at Charlton High. Um, and I thought it'd just be nice to share with you, you know, in what we've been doing. So already last term, students in year seven have looked at different options for careers. They've considered creative careers. Um, this term, they're going to consider careers in the field of STEM um, and be given some time to consider, you know, what skills are needed really. Um, for uh, what skills are needed for the future in terms of careers, you know, this is definitely this is kind of delivered through a mixture of kind of ways. So it's delivered through subject areas. Lots of it's done in form times and assemblies. Um, but I just think it can make some really interesting dinner time conversations. So I just wanted to show you if that's kind of the plan for the year. Um, but we have a really strong careers focus, and it goes through every single academic year. So seven. To 11 um, so it could be something interesting to talk to your child about what they're doing during their time at school now this is the main point of this presentation so um, I just you know it, I, hopefully it's not too much information but I, 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 I need to be as clear as possible with it so I'm gonna give that give that a go so we have progress test cycles at Charlton High we do them in two learning cycles so First learning cycle starts at the start of the autumn term, and obviously we're coming towards the test now. So the tests start next week. Um, we'll test for two weeks, so they'll have a test in every subject over the, the course of those two weeks. And then we have what we call a feedback fortnight, and during that fortnight they'll receive feedback, um, and, and it'll be during that time that's, that, that teachers are really working on closing those gaps, any gaps that might exist, really kind of... Um, addressing any mis misunderstanding, misconceptions, and um, that will be done kind of just after the progress test. So, you know, the, the cycle kind of, the learning cycle goes all the way till that end of that feedback fortnight. And obviously then anything else that we feel like we need to um, address further, we'll kind of move into that second cycle also. So we are on cycle one currently. As I said, they'll start next week, so Monday the 15th. Students have received everything that they need in terms of um, in terms of progress tests. So they've got their study booklets. They've been working on these since uh, you know since the last two weeks of half term. 
Um, we've also emailed this out to parents um, in, in during early December, and um, we just want to share a rundown of kind of what what the booklet is and, and the process that students will follow really. A lot of information. So we have given a lot of thought to progress test this term. So for parents that have older siblings, you'll see that there's been a bit of a shift um, during this cycle. And, and, and that's kind of linked to the student intranet that we've introduced. But what's different, because it's useful to, for you to know as well, is we didn't used to timetable any other subjects other than English, Maths and Science. However, this this time moving forward we will timetable every subject now we haven't put it on the timetable you sh your child should have because we did it in form time with them but we've specified what week each of the different subjects will take place which the test will take place in each week so for example they will know that english is in week one um, and actually what that means is they can just kind of look at their actual timetable and cross-reference as to when their test will take place. They have also been given um, a place to plan where they can put their revision, so you know what that will look like. They've been given subject maps um, and subject kind of information about what they the test will be on. Um, and crucially, what we do at Tolton High is we focus on a specific uh, revision skill each, you know, each cycle just to give them chance to trial it out because you know the progress test cycle isn't just about us knowing you know where students are up to and what what they you know you know what they currently know it's also about them getting that opportunity to use these really valuable skills and find what works for them because some things you'll know yourself some types of revision don't work for all of us so um, year seven has started off with mind maps and we spent some time on that and how they do a mind map, what a mind map looks like, you know, how you can kind of take that further. But in the progress test booklet, we've also put other revision techniques in there for those students that kind of want to stretch themselves and think, well, actually, I, I feel like I've got a good grasp of mind map. I want to try another a strategy as well. That is at the back of the booklet. So, you know, you're welcome to kind of check that out with them as well. Like I said, we also give them like subject information, what's going to be on the test, key keywords, etc. And we will talk to students. I'm going to put this slide up just because this is a slide we'd share with students. We'll talk to students about having a plan and how they can use this information to guide that plan for revision, really. And one of the things I'll talk what I talk about with them is about going through the kind of listed information, the bullet points, and ragging, you know, for each one how confident they feel with that information. So, you know, red being not confident, amber being feeling okay about it, and obviously green being confident. And using the rag, you know, obviously starting with the things you really don't feel confident with, to place your revision in your timetable. Students can't do everything, you know, we're really aware of that. And it's actually about them knowing where do they need to go like what do what are the areas that they feel most and least confident with and kind of prioritizing what it is they then need to go revisit so that's just one way we get them to think about it and so hopefully that's helpful to parents if, if you you want to talk that through with them but you know it, it just it helps them prioritize one thing that has been introduced this year, I mean, this is the website. Um, it's everything that you need is on the website. So if, if, if anything gets lost, it's all on our website. And I know that information has been sent out to parents, but just, just as a reminder, it's on the website. But the big thing that has been introduced this year is the student intranet. And on this, and it can be accessed through their Microsoft Teams. So um, their Microsoft Teams page, so the year page, year seven team page, if they go in there, there's a tab called Home Study, CHS Home Study Site. On that site is everything that they could possibly want, including the progress test booklet, the study information, and, and really importantly, the knowledge organisers that go along with each subject. Um, there's also then the revision strategies as well that you can click into and, and get more information on if you wanted to. But it is all on there and it's all accessible through their Teams page 
um, and if they go into their year team page, it's it's a tab at the top that like I say it says CHS home study site and they can get everything from there. Now we have spent some time with students already looking at that in form time and we are actually going to do this again with students on Friday just to remind them of this site. It's incredibly powerful and I would say as well, it's not just for progress tests. So you can use this throughout the course of the year because it's got everything you could possibly want to know about the topics that you're studying on these knowledge organisers. So it's something that students can use kind of routinely throughout the year. But it's obviously, you know, it's obviously something that we want to drive through progress tests because this is a kind of really um, timely um, way of using it and getting used to it. But it is something that we'd recommend students do, you know, throughout the year. When you are get get the report, which which I'll show you a video. It's the next slide. I promise. I'm I'm, I'm nearly finished. Um, you'll get effort criteria, and and you, you, your child will be given um one to four, one being excellent, and four being poor. And then obviously you've got good effort in between with two, and and then obviously um I I say you know it requires improvement with three it, 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 it requires some improvement and um, this is the criteria that student that teachers use to measure if you like that measure the um, effort of, of your child and we you know we want to just kind of give you a little bit of a view of that just so you know kind of what that actually looks like so I'm going to let you have a quick look at that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the video and I'm going to let you um, I'm going to show you that if you would like to watch this in your own time it is available to do so I will send it out again and um, if you want to watch along with us that's fine also so let me just give you a bit of time I really recommend you look at the kind of excellence because it, it's you know the, there's some high expectations in there but actually good as well like what what is it your child doing if they're meeting that criteria because that's what staff will be using in order to make their decision when they look at that you'll get an effort grade both for class and home learning so you get you get one for each of the the two you know the two parts of learning that your child does and um, so i'll give you you know a minute to kind of have a look through that and then i'm going to move over to the next slide um before I do give you that minute and then move on to the next slide, I am going to say goodbye now because some people will not want to watch the video. I just want to thank everyone for attending and, and just listening to, I hope, some useful information. If there is anything though that you think could really do with knowing this or I'm a bit, I feel unclear about this, um, please let us know. You know, it's really important that we work together on, you know, we feel like we're sharing what we need to share, but there might be things that you think, no, there's a, there's a gap here. Please let me know. Um, I'm all ears. I really, you know, we want to support as much as we can. Um, so, yeah, I will leave you with that for a minute and then I will play this video. Thank you so much for, for attending. So I'm just going to share my screen just so you can see the video. Um, I will just share it. Yeah. I want to share that and share. And you should be able to see, hear that now. Hello. Welcome to this presentation on assessment at Key Stage 3 at Charleston High School. 
This presentation is aimed at both students and parents and will help you understand the way we assess and report in years seven, eight and nine. My name is Mr Dawson. I am one of the deputy head teachers here at CHS. And part of my role is working to improve the curriculum and the assessment of the curriculum. At Key Stage 3, we are changing the way that we do things. These changes are mainly to do with how we assess and what we report home to the parents. We have replaced our old system, which was based on reporting progress of students. We believe our new system is much better as it focuses on judging how well a student knows the curriculum in each subject. We are looking in detail at how the student is performing in key concepts in each subject and more on this later. So to start us off, we have a question. What exactly is a curriculum? So a curriculum is made up of all the knowledge, skills and experiences that students will learn and be able to do across each of their subjects. At Charlton High School, this is represented as a five year learning journey across each subject. Our aim is for students to become knowledge rich and move from novice to expert in each subject. In other words, it is everything that is taught and hopefully learned in each classroom at Chalton High School. So what knowledge is in the curriculum? Knowledge is what students need to be able to be successful in their academic studies. And knowledge in the curriculum can be broken down into two main types. These are called declarative knowledge and procedural knowledge. Declarative knowledge is the what. It is the facts, the concepts or the rules. Procedural knowledge is the how. It produces some kind of action. It is following the steps of a process. Procedural knowledge can also be conditional meaning it relies on knowledge that has come before. Another way to think of things is that declarative knowledge is key ideas and procedural knowledge is using, applying and critiquing them. So what we are going to do is to ask students, teachers, about the knowledge that the students have gained in all of their subjects and ask them the question, how well have you learned the curriculum? How well have the students learned the curriculum? Therefore, this will be a judgment of how much knowledge, both declarative and procedural, students have gained over time. To do this, we're going to assign one of the five words you see here to each student in each subject. These words are emerging, developing, secure, extending, and exceptional. The words and what they mean will be slightly different in each subject as the knowledge and skills needed for each subject differ. I'll now go into more detail on what each of the words mean in general terms. The first word to look at is emerging. A student working at this level has some knowledge and an emerging understanding of key concepts in the curriculum. An emerging student will find that learning is a challenge and that the subject content is difficult most of the time. They need to focus on practicing and learning key concepts so they can move to the next stage, which is developing. A student working at this level is developing their knowledge as outlined in the curriculum. They are developing the understanding of the key concepts. However, they're not yet secure in these. A student here will find lessons hard sometimes, but will be able to grasp many, but probably not all of the key concepts. They will make mistakes, but this is all part of the learning journey as they try to get their knowledge to be secure. And a student working at this level is secure in their knowledge. They have mastered key concepts and would get things right the majority of the time. All students should be aiming for their knowledge to be at least secure, as this will mean they are on target in their key stage three studies to have a solid foundation of knowledge at the start of their GCSE studies in year 10. If their knowledge remains secure in years 10 and year 11, they will be looking at gaining grade fives and access to many of the courses that they want to study at college. A student who would like to specialise in a certain area should be aiming for their knowledge to be more than secure and extending. So a student working at this level is very secure in their knowledge. They are demonstrating that they have a greater depth of understanding and can apply and manipulate knowledge in key concepts. Students at this level often find that they are easily able to recall their knowledge and they learn things relatively easily, especially new things. They are accurate almost all of the time. 
and are often reaching the extension activities in class. If a student maintains their knowledge at this level, they should be looking at studying the subject perhaps beyond year 11, as they are capable of very high grades indeed. If a student's level is even beyond this level, the student's knowledge will be deemed as exceptional. And a student working at this level is excelling in a level that is exceptional. They display excellent knowledge, application, and the interplay of the key concepts that together demonstrate an academic flair for the subject. Students at this level are incredibly able in a certain discipline and are always quick and always accurate. This is a level that will only be reached by one to two percent of our student population and students at this level should be looking at targeting grade nines which is the highest grade in their year 11 studies. So what happens over time? As student moves Student, sorry, as students move through key stage three, the curriculum will also change as it gets broader and more challenging. And our aim is for all students to be at least secure in their knowledge in all subjects. Our teachers work really hard to deliver lessons that enable students to have this knowledge. And they also work tirelessly to support students who will have emerging or developing knowledge. Students who reach extending will be those who put in the extra work often outside the classroom in their home learning and home study as we know that hard work and focused revision often pays off. So how do we make our judgments? Each subject area in every year group will have their own criteria for the five words that we are using to assess the student's knowledge. These will be sent home with any reports to parents and I'll give you an example in a moment. Teachers will use a variety of evidence to judge where a student's knowledge is up to. They will use a number of factors that are listed here and one of our large pieces of evidence of a student's performance are our progress tests that take place in the spring one half term and the summer two half terms. However, we understand that there's more to a student's knowledge than just replicating it on the test. And we take a balanced view of test performance together with the student's ability to communicate their ideas and thoughts through work produced in class and at home or question answers and conversations had with students in class. Students will get their key stage three report in the spring two and summer two half terms, and they will look similar to the example shown here. We have a new system for reporting, and this is not yet set up. So we are aiming to send something that looks roughly like what you can see here. There are three main parts to reading the table. The first is to look at the curriculum statement for each subject. And the other two pieces of information are the effort grades, one for effort in class, and the other for effort at home. I will revisit this table later, but I want to spend a little while giving you an example of how to look at the curriculum statements and how to use the effort grades effectively. And of course, there will be more subjects than just these few that I'm showing here. So here's an example of what you may get from each subject. This information, as I said earlier, will be sent home with the reports and will also be available to view on the school website. This is year seven and it is food and nutrition, food technology. In red here, this is what has been taught over the course of year seven in food. It's broken down into knowledge and skills. Below, you'll see a number of statements that detail what the knowledge judgments look like. I've highlighted this secure knowledge in a yellow box to show what it means to be secure in food in year seven. What you will see when you look at these sentences is that the more independent the student is, the further right their judgment will be. Class teachers will also help the students understand how to move their knowledge from developing to secure or from secure to extending. They will revisit knowledge toolkits used in most lessons. They will refer to personalized learning checklists that are used in many areas after progress tests to identify a student's individual strengths or areas to concentrate on and they may direct some specific areas for home learning. Accompanying the curriculum statements, as I mentioned earlier, would be effort. And here is our effort grid. This details what we deem to be the skills and traits demonstrated by our students that will enable them to be CHS scholars. This grid again is on our website. 
in the assessment and reporting area. So you can look at it in more detail then should you wish. Effort grades go from four, which is poor effort, to three, which is where effort requires improvement, to two, which we deem as good effort, to one, which is excellent effort. The top eight rows are to do with effort in the classroom, and the bottom three rows that are shaded slightly darker are to do for effort in home learning. These effort descriptors are a group of learning and organisational behaviours that will lead to students being a success. And many of these behaviours are things that our students do on a daily basis and have been doing for many, many years. Excellent effort in the blue column is attainable for the majority of students and all they do. For example, they need to arrive promptly and fully equipped to every lesson. They need to show the right focus in lessons by sitting up straight, tracking the teacher, asking and answering questions and showing respect to others. Student books should be exceptional with new vocabulary written down and defined and work presented so that the book can almost be used as a revision aid. Excellent effort by a student is also demonstrated, demonstrating listening skills, working collaboratively as a team and responding well to feedback. Excellent effort in home learning is similar, but applying these same skills to work completed at home and of course, handing work in on time. The reason that I talk in detail about effort is that it's something that we are working on all the time in school. Form tutors and the year teams regularly revisit aspects of of effort and we'll go into great detail in one area at once helping the student to understand just what is expected of them in all lessons teachers also reinforce the learning behaviors so they become habits and the students will do them without thinking and in my opinion they are the most important part of the report because there are clear things that we can do in order to help students improve so let's go back to the example report that i showed earlier this student has clearly done well in most subjects and has a talent for drama with the effort grades of the curriculum statement of extending. But the student hasn't done so well in science or maths. Could this be that effort in class is not as good as it could be? The student here can put the effort into other subjects, so what's going on? I would certainly have a conversation with the, with the child. Firstly, I would talk about the effort and get the students to think about what they are trying in their subjects that they're doing well in. And are they applying the same effort, the same behaviours, the same habits to their maths and science? Or perhaps maybe the student hasn't grasped some of the concepts in maths and science. So it would be worth to look back at the curricula in these subjects and look at the breakdown of what's been taught and whether the student has grasped it. This will also be supported by the class teacher. So the report here help guide the support for the student learning. Some students may see these um, curriculum statements in their effort and be able to work independently on improvement in a few of their areas. Some students may require some support from parents, from teachers or form tutors. All of this is absolutely OK. It's part of the learning process to get the students at Key Stage 3 ready for further subject studies at Key Stage 4. If you would like to know more, please visit the assessment and reporting section of the school website where all this information will eventually be stored. At the moment, it's under construction, but there'll be much more information on there early to mid-January. That's all from me for the time being. Can I thank you for your time listening to this presentation and, of course, for your continuing support for all of our students. All of those things are now in place. That's a video we actually made when we, last year when this was all quite new, but we still thought it was quite beneficial to show it to you. So. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, thank you so much for your time. Um, and if you've got any questions, I'll be sending out a survey in the next couple of days. So please just let let us know, and, and we'll you know we'll, we'll get back to parents kind of collectively. Um, thank you again. Um, have a lovely evening. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>